Hello again, fellow Beach Bum Traders. Thank you for joining us for part two of our weekly trading game plan for the trading week of February 6th through February 10th, where we'll talk about our top swing trading stocks to watch for this week. Again, February 6th through February 10th. Welcome, Tony Roses. Thank you for joining us in the live chat today. Hope you're doing well. So here's our notes for part two of our weekly trading game plan for this week. If you have not already seen part one of our weekly trading game plan for this week, titled Be Fearful When Others Are Greedy, then we would highly recommend that you also view part one as it has our market analysis, our strategies, trade ideas, and why we're saying be fearful when others are greedy. And we show that we're now currently in an extreme greed uh, state as per the fear and greed index that we also showed in that video so again we'd recommend you listen to part one as that provides the thesis for the stocks that we're putting on our watch list uh, for potential trades for this week welcome also flip of the ship easy mike again tony roses ricky khan thank you all for joining us again this is our google document with our notes for part two of our weekly trading game plan uh, these are publicly accessible. You should be able to find a link to this Google document in the description box below. We put our notes, Google documents, in a publicly accessible folder, which you should also be able to find a link to in the description box below. So you can refer back to our notes for this week and or any previous week. And again, we have some bonus videos, links to bonus videos, all the tools, etc., that we use in our weekly trading game plan uh, in this notes document. So firstly, I'll go over some of it. It was a busy kind of wild week, as you all uh, heard in part one. We talked about the economic data and the uh, irrational exuberant reaction, in my humble opinion, to uh, some of that data. Um, and again, none of this is financial advice. We're not financial advisors. This is all for education and hopefully some level of entertainment purposes only. Um, again, we'll go over some of our trades. It was a busy week. So first we'll talk about FAZ. FAZ is the bear. It's a leveraged inverse ETF on the financial sector. And you'll see we took several trades on FAZ. Uh, we initially went long on FAZ on the 31st at 1582. We then got stopped out. Uh, that was a uh, on 211, pretty much for break even. And then we tried again on the third, got back in at 1540. So I'll jump over to uh, Weeble and we'll take a look at those trades in FAZ. So again, currently we not, we are now long again FAZ, shorting the financial industry as of uh, the third at 1540. I also want to also show you the inverse of FAZ, which is FAS, because I'm using that as an indicator as to why I, I was comfortable getting back in and also um, why I think uh, this is a good a good trade. So, again, we initially got in on the 30th at about 1582 or so. And then again, you see um, we got stopped out pretty quickly. That, that can't be right. So again, I think that was pretty much a day trade on the on the 31st because when it declined uh, pretty rapidly, we, we got stopped out at that 1582. Then you can see I was looking for a re-entry at that 1540, which was the previous bottom. I, I put a trade in there, a buy in there, and just waited for it to hit on Friday. And so it, it spiked down, caught my uh, my buy, and we can see it's it's currently profitable. I want to again look at FAS, which is the inverse of FAZ. This is the long on the financial industry. And actually, I want to jump over to FinBiz and show you where the um, where the resistance level on FAS is. So if I look up FAS, which is the bull on the financial industry, this is the inverse of FAZ. This is why I was so uh, interested in that level in FAZ is this resistance level on FAS. So this is this uh, 
pivot point has been providing pretty pretty strong resistance. We can see even though it dipped above it a couple times that that pivot point has provided pretty good uh, resistance in the financial industry. So again, when it seemed to be uh, uh, faltering at that pivot point again, I wanted to go long on FAS and look for this again, a rejection off that pivot line. So that's again my thesis for why we're currently long uh, FAZ, which again is the short on um, the um, financial industry. So welcome uh, Douglas PC, glad to see you. Thank you for joining us. So the second trade is uh, a couple of these. I was a little early. We saw they really uh, were pretty persistent on running the tech industry, even when the jobs data came out weaker, even when we got a, a interest rate or interest rate increase and the uh, bond yields went up uh, again they were pretty persistent they wanted to run tech even when you know apple uh google microsoft all had bad earnings uh disappointing earnings disappointing guidance again they they still want to run wanted to try to run tech up until uh, at least friday afternoon um but again, my, my thesis is that that's going to falter, particularly in the areas of uh, the fangs, which again, uh, the Amazon, Netflix, uh, Google, uh, Apple. Apple was also a disappointing earnings. So again, I, I was very interested in going long on fang D, which is the short on the fang stocks. So you'll see we went long Fang D at 31.34 on the first. Again, I was a little early. I have a tendency to be early, which is why I always say, um, you know, I, I don't recommend that anyone follow us blindly into a trade or anyone else blindly into a trade. Uh, but uh, again, I, I hope that this helps and I'll, I'll show you where you can get alerts uh, on where when we make trades or when we get uh, close a trade or get stopped out of a trade. Uh, in a minute. Uh, welcome, Walter Lyons. Glad to see you. Thank you also for joining us. So again, I went uh, long on Fang D on the first at thirty-one thirty-four. So we'll jump over here, look at uh, Fang D. Let's zoom in. So on the first. 31.34. So again, I was a little premature. It continued to decline some. On Friday, late Friday, it did start to recover. So we're going to wait for this to loop up. Again, the inverse of Fang D is Fang U. So if we jump over to Finviz and we look at Fang U, see where it is. Again, I use the the bull versions to kind of see how that had a, a major gap up. Uh, I was watching, you know, this again, this pivot point resistance, it continued to gap up, but now it's uh, looks like it's dropping back off and it's got a nice morning star down there. So um, I'm comfortable that, you know, we're going to get a reversal in the fangs and, and over time uh, this will turn out to be a, a nice trade, hopefully. Similarly, we talked about last week, the biotechs, wanting to short the biotechs. And again, biotechs, most of them lose money. There are a lot of them are zombies. We've, you know, we've got a, a high uh, interest rate. There are alternatives to stocks where you can actually earn uh, a real uh, real return nowadays. We've been talking about this for a long time. So again, we were comfortable with a position shorting the biotechs. Again, they ran the biotechs with the overall tech. So we went long uh, Lab D at 1386 on the first, along with the Fang D trade. So again, they continued to push it, you know, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They continued to push this with tech, but it, you can see it's looping back up. So again, the inverse of uh, la, uh, Lab U, uh, the inverse of Lab D is Lab U. So we can see where that is. Again, I always use the the bull version to see a top. And then, uh, so again, very similar to Fang D, they pushed it up. Now it looks like it's dropping off, so. Good morning, Nagam. Thank you for joining us. Um, 
Just another update is uh, we got stopped out of our uh, position in OPP. This is that fixed income bond fund. Uh, we've been holding that for about a month. We got in on the 5th of January at 880. Um, I've been trailing it, manually trailing it with a stop. As we'll see, it kind of popped up and then rolled over. So we stopped out at 917, got a nice profit, about 4.2%. Uh, monthly ROI about 4.4%. And this is after we had also collected the monthly dividend for uh, the month of January uh, in OPP, which is about 10 cents. It's got a, a nice uh, dividend yield in, in the teens, double digits, uh, up to about 20% yield. So uh, we will be looking to get back into OPP when it uh, comes back down. But you'll see it had made a nice run, then it rolled over, and we got stopped out when it when it rolled over and went down again for a nice profit when it comes back down here uh we'll we'll get back in probably tr we'll try to get back in before the next div ex dividend date finally again a lot of trades this week uh socks is the short on semiconductors same thesis you know we've heard Qualcomm even came out after this and gave poor guidance. We've heard, you know, all the semis or guidance is generally poor. Uh, supply now is a surplus. Demand's dropping off. PC demand dropping off, etc. Uh, we initially got in on the 27th and um, got stopped out on the 31st for about a 9.6% profit equates to a monthly profit of almost 72%. So congratulations to all of our fellow beach bum traders who made money on these trades, who profited on these trades in OPP and SOX S. Uh, I was trying to get back into SOX S on Friday. Uh, I'll show you, I've got an order sitting out there waiting again for SOX S to, to hit. So again, we got in on the 27th out on the 31st. So we again, you see, you know, we caught this this run, this nice run. When it rolled over, took our profits, and you can see I've I've got an order sitting out there. I think it's sitting at eighteen forty two right now. I thought it might uh, might hit on Friday, and they just didn't quite push it down quite far enough. So uh, I didn't really want to chase it up here. We'll see if we get a gap down on Monday in Sox S. Again, the inverse of SOX S is SOX L, which is the long leveraged on semiconductors. So you see they all kind of look the same. Fang D, Lab, Lab U, or Fang U, Lab U, and SOX L, they all have that gap up. They were pushing them all up together. So we'll see if we can get a divergence in the uh, biotech semiconductors, FANGs versus uh, tech in general. So that's what that's our trades for the week. Again, it was a pretty busy week. Um, as well as you'll see, you know, updating the watch list pretty frequently this week. Uh, if you want to get real time trade alerts when we make these trades, when we close these trades, etc., you can join our Patreon. Any level of our Patreon, we uh, try to post uh, those um, trades to our Patreon. You'll get an email notification. Uh, when we enter, when we exit a trade. Um, also, we post these in our Discord. Uh, our Patreon members have access to these alerts channels in our Discord. And again, I will post uh, these trades in uh, the alerts channels, the appropriate alerts channels in our Discord. So again, you can see uh, what we're trading. Again, I don't ever blindly recommend or recommend that anyone blindly follow us or anyone into a trade uh, but if this helps you see our logic why we're entering when we're entering when we're exiting etc and this helps you succeed in your trading career uh, then that's great and again you can join our patreon at any level and get access to those alerts also we have price alerts in thinkorswim uh, that get automatically triggered and then posted to this thinkorswim alerts channel and then if we follow this up with an actual trade then i will update uh, that posting with our actual entry or exit position so i hope that helps so let me grab a drink and then we'll talk about our watch list updates for this week <clears throat>
Okay. You guys are having a good conversation in the chat. Love to see that. We've got a great community of beach bum traders uh, helping each other out. Uh, help. We are, that's our goal is to build a community to uh, beach bum traders to help each other out succeed in, in your trading. So glad to see that. Thank you. Okay, so our updates to our uh, real-time watch list. Again, these are all the ones we're currently monitoring to enter a position in this week. Uh, we've got automation that runs and notifies me if they're moving up, moving down, hit our price target, etc. First one, we just talked about FAZ. So we're currently long FAZ. If you're not already uh, long FAZ, there's still a, a good opportunity uh, as you saw, Fang D also good opportunity. Actually, you know, uh, again, I tend to be kind of early in some of these, and and often you can get a better price if you're a little more nimble uh, than I am. And or you know, a lot of times I just place my orders and then go to the beach, and and if it hits, that's great. I'm going to be doing that more going forward. That seems to be. Uh, uh, probably my best strategy is is pick a price that I'm happy with, put my order in there like we saw on uh, FAZ, and then when it hits, you know, if it goes a little lower, that's fine. I'm not trying to necessarily catch the very bottom or very top. I'm just trying to make money and, and hopefully help you all uh, make money as well. So again, Lab D, we're already long. Uh, still, again, good opportunity there. LUMN, uh, Lumen Technologies, we've had on our watch list for several weeks. Uh, it's a little up. We'll, we'll see um, if it'll come down. We have, if we get a little dip in technology. PALL, again, Palladium, we've been watching. We looked at the futures in Palladium. It's a little bit up, but it, it looks like we might have a chance if they keep pushing basic materials down as well. Talked about SOCKS-S. I'd like to get back into SOCKS-S. Also, I added these uh, during the week this week. These are both shorts on the Russell. Um, I want to show you the these two charts in um, FinBiz as well. And I'll show you a nice little trick with our notes documents. As you see, these are actually hyperlinked. So you, if you can click on the symbol in our Google document, then you can actually jump directly to that chart in FinViz. So here's the short on, uh, this is SRTY, the short on the Russell. The inverse of SRTY is URTY. And again, one of the reasons I'm not as comfortable shorting the Russell is you see it's it's broken out. It's broken out of uh, previous highs. It's got more room to run. Um, I would, again, this is not uh, financial advice, but what I'm looking to do if you're a more nimble trader is I would look for that reversal, confirmation of that reversal and some downward momentum. Because again, I think there's some significant risk that they might continue to try to run the Russell up to uh, these higher levels. So again, I'm a little more hesitant. I'd like to see confirmation that the Russell's dumping um, before I jump into either um, SRTY or TZA, which is again, another uh, ETF that is short. It's another bear ETF uh, short on the Russell. And we'll look at the risk reward profiles of both of those when we get to our ETF spreadsheet. So you can see it's you know severely dropped off, making new lows. Uh, the inverse of TZA is TNA, and we'll see similarly. You know, it's broken out, ran up, and again, it's got you know plenty of room to run if they want to try to keep running the Russell. So uh, again, I I would. Uh, be aware of market sentiment if we continue with this um, irrational exuberance and they, they want to try to run small caps, run the Russell, uh, then I would wait on uh, both of these. And, and therefore, we've not jumped in too quick on, on those. Um, just another reminder, if you want to get uh, more frequent updates on our watch list, including access to an automatically generated web page, uh, that comes out every day, including price targets, etc. cetera. Um, you can join our Patreon. Again, our Patreons have access to this web page. It gets automatically updated every day. So if I make any changes uh, after market, uh, you'll see those. We've also included uh, dividend information, ex-dividend dates, dividend yields, whether the symbol's optionable or not in this web page. 
and also if I make uh, intraday, you know, pre-market changes or uh, any more frequent changes, our Patreon members have access to the stock watch list channel. And you can see I would post um, any uh, intraday pre-market uh, changes to our watch list in that channel as well. So again, if you're interested in more frequent updates to our watch list, you can join our Patreon and get access uh, to that. Now we'll jump over to Weeble and we'll actually look at um, the charts for each of these stocks. Just a quick reminder, uh, Weeble's still offering their 12 free stocks. Uh, if you're not already using Weeble, you can see we use it for market analysis, due diligence, the majority of our trading. Uh, as you'll see, there's opportunities uh, it, because you can trade in Weeble from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. And some of these ETFs rebalance, uh, recalculate sometimes at 4 a.m. And that uh, offers some op unique opportunities that we like to take advantage of. So, again, if you're not already using Weeble, you can get 12 free stocks, each worth from three to $3,000, two for just opening your account, and 10 for funding your account with $100. So again, it's our favorite trading platform. We recommend it. Uh, you can get a bunch of free stocks just by opening and funding your account. You can always cash them out, take the cash elsewhere if you don't like the platform. I'm using the online browser version of Weeble. They also have a PC desktop based version that I also use and a mobile app version, which I, I don't really use. So, uh, yeah, you, I see Easy Mike and you guys are talking about the, the dollar and the Bank of England. Uh, also, the EU just, well, I think we talked about this yesterday. They just raised their rates by 50 basis points and said uh, they're going to keep raising as well. So there'll be, in my humble opinion, some interesting uh, flows between uh, currencies as well as bonds. Uh, I'll be interested to hear your opinion on that as well, Easy Mike and others. So here's the remaining stocks on our real-time watch list. Again, we talked about LUMN. It's a technology. You can see I kind of I kind of like it down here, you know, around the five area. It's a little bit up. It did come down a bit on Friday. Uh, they had gapped it up on on Thursday quite a bit. Uh, so I'd like it to come down a little bit, uh, get a double bottom in there, and then maybe we'll we'll take a position in LUMN. PALL, I'd really like it down around this 144. You can see it's been coming down. As we'll see in our ETF spreadsheet, if it comes down to that 144, that'll get, get me the two to one uh, risk to reward ratio that I like. Uh, SOX, again, this is the short on semiconductors. It just didn't quite hit my, my order uh, at 1842 on Friday, but again, Hopefully, maybe they'll gap it down and maybe we'll get it there or cheaper. And we talked about SRTY. We looked at their inverses there. And again, I'd, I'd watch the, the longs in all these cases, SOXL, uh, URTY, and TNA uh, for the tops on those to uh, determine an entry point on the shorts. So let's talk about our bullpen. Actually, I really don't have anything interesting on our bullpen. The concept of our bullpen is those that have a setup that might uh, become more attractive in the near future. I only revisit these at the end of day. Um, and again, with them running, uh, running so many of the stocks, there wasn't really anything that looked like it was terribly attractive from a uh, swing position. Um, I did leave UROI. Um, in the web page just so that it had something for that section but you can see it's it's run up pretty much so uh uroi is the uranium play that we like so if they happen to push uranium down uh and uroi comes back down i'd, I'd be interested in that but again um it's it's pretty much run up at this point So now let's look at our ETF spreadsheet. Um, 
and we'll see if you guys have any categories. Uh, again, we've got uh, ETFs on indices, commodities, currencies, etc. If you have a particular category you want to take a look at, I'll let this guy come up, and then I'll talk about the enhancements we made to it. Again, our all access and VIP Patreons have 24 by 7 access to this ETF spreadsheet. As you'll see it, uh, the prices are updated in some cases from some Google Finance functions. It's uh, not completely real time. It's about a 20 minute lag. And then we updated uh, the support resistance bottom and top uh, fields from our database at the uh, aftermarket each day as well. And you can see I added uh, previously this green highlighting if all the four of the risk reward columns have a risk reward profile of greater than two. And those are the ones that uh, we can quickly focus on. So again, if you'd like uh, 24 by 7 access to this, uh, if you join at the all access or VIP level, uh, you will have access or anyone that was a Patreon before. Uh, has been grandfathered in uh, to this level. So I see uh, natural gas, U UNGs, boil. Uh, I've been watching this uh, defense guy, but it's still kind of high. We've been looking at uh, ARC, really more from the SARC standpoint, um, but it's it's still kind of, you know, the risk reward profile is not great. We talked about Lab D. And we're watching that. These, these I've been keeping an eye on these cannabis uh, ETFs, but um, they're a little bit above their support level. And uh, there's a resistance line in their trend uh, that they could continue to decline. Yin and Yang are the China um, technology ETFs, again, day trade opportunities, momentum with the uh, weather balloon thing going on. We might see some some dramatic uh, activity in those. You also have K-Web, et cetera. These are all uh, China-based ETFs. So you might, if you're interested in trying to play that news, uh, might be opportunities there. This is a coal. I've been keeping an eye on that. It's not terribly interesting right now, but Uh, here's the Fang D, Fang U. You can see what the risk reward profile looks like on those. Here's FAZ. Um, gold got, you know, we talked yesterday about gold and silver and uh, how they, you know, beat those down. There might be short term trade opportunities. My preference for, uh, you know, short term trading in gold is GDXU. Longer term, we're long GLDI, which is a monthly dividend paying uh, gold ETN. Uh, silver AGQ is the one I would play short term. And again, we're long SOVO. You see SQQQ, that's short on the NASDAQ showing up. I did take a look at that, but I, I kind of prefer the Fang D. Sox S, Lab D, um, over just the general. So here we see boil, you know, natural gas has been just making lower lows lately. Um, so yeah, you know, but it's not clear if it's even bottomed. Again, the sentiment's very negative. So you can see it's very attractive. Uh, but again, we, we don't have a clear uh, indication that we're at a bottom and the sentiment could drive it even even farther down, so. Here's UNG. So again, you know, I, I prefer boil to UNG. There's a little bit of a difference. I would recommend looking at the uh, composition of these. Uh, their, their definition is a little bit different in terms of the futures that they look at uh, in terms of their composition. Again, we've talked about our position in natural gas. We have positions in both cold and boil right now, so we're pretty much neutral. 
uh, in natural gas, and I'm, I'm scalping the uh, covered calls on both sides. So as long as they keep pushing one or the other and make the covered calls attractive, then you know that's our strategy right now um, in natural gas is scalping the covered calls. Um, again, they're, they've been swinging. It's very volatile. It swings, you know, could swing 10% in a day. So you need to be nimble. Uh, but again, we prefer to play natural gas with boil and cold. Boil is the long, cold. KOLD is the short. Here's the SRTY, the short on the Russell. Again, you see it's got an attractive. I mean, they both have attractive risk reward profiles. So again, that tells you there's some risk there. Here's Sox S. Here's AGQ. We just talked about silver. Again, the price on silver, I think, in my opinion, is still kind of high. Uh, but short-term trades, uh, there's some opportunity. We talked about TZA and T TNA. Again, the Russell, both sides are showing uh, opportunity. So again, there's, you know, short-term Day trade, momentum trade, uh, follow follow the direction. You can make some money. Been watching this uh, VNAM. This is uh, easy. Mike turned us on to this. It's a little bit high right now. UBXY. We saw the uh, VIX had been declining. We're already long UBXY. We went long UBXY in, in advance of the Fed, and we haven't got that pop yet, but uh, we'll, we'll see if we get a, a gap up um, on Monday. Monday, we tend to get a little bit of a gap up in volatility, and then uh, we'll just wait for the next event that causes a, a volatility pop. Okay, is there any other category? Any uh, see Easy Mike's talking about gold miners. Uh, there's several ETFs you can play gold miners. JNUG is one I know. Uh, here's also dust. You can see dust is a gold miners 2x bear. That's a short. JNUG is a long on junior miners. So you can see deep. Here's a double long ETN on. Uh, gold itself. So a lot of opportunities. Again, you can uh, peruse the various ETFs uh, that we have. The yellow ones mean I don't have them in my database. Uh, so the support resistance, etc. don't get automatically updated. Typically because they don't present a, a two to one or better risk reward profile even in their 52 week range. So I, I don't put them in my database. I'm not terribly interested in anything that doesn't at least uh, have the opportunity of a two to one. Okay. We talked about, um, uh, talk about our shopping list, and then we'll talk about strategies. Again, our concept of the shopping list is just ones we always recommend you have a shopping list of stocks, uh, ones you always want to buy, uh, potentially for a longer-term investment, longer-term hold, uh, and be ready when the opportunity presents itself. They've become cheap, cheap enough that you want to buy them. Um, we talked yesterday about the January barometer and what that means in terms of what to expect for the markets uh, for this year. So I won't uh, go over that. We've talked about, you know, uh, don't get hurt from the FTX bankruptcy fallout, which continues. Uh, beware of zombie stocks. We still got high inflation, rising interest rates. Interest rates just went up again. So uh, if that's going to negatively impact your stock, be aware of that. And, you know, it's uncertain and there's a debate whether we're uh, in a recession, going into a shallow recession, a deep recession. So, again, that debate continues. In my humble opinion, it's best just to make sure that anything you buy is going to be recession proof. So let me grab a, another drink and then we'll talk about our option strategies. And I'll see if there's any questions I missed in the chat.
Okay, we've been talking for several weeks about uh, our evolving uh, option strategies. We talk about our primary strategies right now is selling and buying back covered calls and selling and buying back cash secured puts. Again, since we're doing most of our trading in retirement accounts, that's why I'm doing, you know, primarily, and I like low risk. Um, so I'm, you know, it's either a cash uh, covered call or cash secured put in my case. But if you just want to trade calls and puts, uh, these um, strategies should apply, should work for you. Uh, we released our first video on the options wheel strategy for beginners. You can see that via this link in our notes and also on our Beach Bum Trading YouTube channel. I have other videos in the works and uh, talking more about the wheel strategy. Um, again, uh, you can read what we've talked about our, our strategy in general. It is to continuing to evolve as well as my supporting systems to support this strategy. So again, we're using this to generate additional revenue, essentially generate our own dividends. Uh, we sell when uh, we sell puts when the uh, stock price is going down. We buy them back when it's going up. Inversely with uh, covered calls, we sell when the stock price is going up, buy them back when the stock price is going down. Again, for puts, we don't want crappy or zombie companies. Also, I don't want to buy something that I'd want to buy the actual shares in. Um, I, you know, putting strike price below my target buy, buy price with a 30 to 40 day expiration window. You'll see now in our spreadsheet, we're highlighting ones that have a return on invested capital of greater than or equal to 5%. And typically, I'm looking for a delta less than or equal to 30%. So there's a 30% or less chance that it's going to actually get exercised. Uh, we've been discussing and, and trying to garner, garner feedback on people's experience on how often do you get early exercise. So uh, last week or the past couple of weeks, we've introduced this new uh, puts uh, return on invested capital Google sheet that I'll bring up now. And we'll take a look at uh, what we've got, some enhancements to that for this week. Uh, if you'd like to have access again to this, it's uh, it updates, you know, using Google Finance uh, functions for the real time uh, stock price. And then also at the end of the day, I have automatic, uh, I have automation that updates the other uh, prices. And you'll see some additions to that uh, at the end of the day when we run our updates. See, we added uh, last low and high columns. These get automatically updated after market close by my automation. Um, we have previous research we did. Uh, some other changes and enhancements you'll see in a second as I updated expiration dates to 317. So to the March expiration, because that's now going to be within that 40 day window and the premiums on the February's were just not very attractive. I also added another sheet titled add showing new symbols added to the research sheet as of this week. So you can see what we added uh, recently. Also, there's a link to the profile for each symbol in FinViz in the comments column. So you can jump over uh, to the FinViz profile uh, for each stock and take a look at uh, how it's moving during the day. And if you all would like us to add any kind of put option for uh, me to run the research on, again, I'll run the research uh, automation against it at the end of the day and, and update the spreadsheet um, accordingly. And then I'll come back to that. So here's what we have on our primary watch list right now. You can see the ones that are highlighted in green shows that they were going, uh, again, this is selling puts. So they're green if it's going down uh, during the day. And then I'm also looking for a ROIC, a return on invested capital of greater than or equal to 5%. So you see the ROIC column. We can see, you know, ARK-K is showing attractive. Again, you see I updated the expiration dates to March. So ARK-K is showing a 7. Disney's got a, a 6. 
NVIDIA, Tesla. And again, you can see what strike price uh, this is evaluated for. You can see the last low high for the past day. So this is from Friday, 52 week high and low and the current Delta. Again, all those are updated from my automation. Um, at the end of the day, uh, all the gray columns are updated um, via my automation at the end of the day. We do have several orders out right now on Amazon, Disney, and Generac. Uh, they haven't hit yet, and I'm still trying to figure out uh, how to price them efficiently. So uh, they're both uh, reasonably profitable and are going to get actually um, purchased, in this case, since I'm selling puts. Um, research tab are ones that I popped up when I go through the ROI uh, I go through the option seller tool. So we're using this uh, option seller tool to identify others that may have a 5% or better um, ROIC. And you can find a link. Here's a link in the Google document. You can also find a link to the option seller tool under links on our homepage, beachbumtrading.com, bum without the U. If you go down to trading tools. Well, you can find this option seller ROI tool at any time. So again, now at the end of the day, I go through, use that option seller ROI tool, look for ones that have a uh, ROIC of better than 5%, um, you know, Delta with 30%, uh, 30% 30 or less, and, uh, and then add them to this research tab. And then I run my automation to calculate, you know, what their actual ROIC is uh, for the strike prices that I'm interested in. So again, if you're, you know, if you're interested in getting this data, uh, you can join our Patreon at uh, the all access or VIP levels. Again, if you want me to run the automation, just, you know, put a request in in our Discord, tag me in our Discord or via social media, et cetera. I can add it to the sheet. Then when the automation runs, it'll update the data and we can see if they're potentially attractive. Now, you can see a number of these, you know, are better than 5%. So I have to do some further uh, due diligence on them to evaluate if we want to add them to our primary watch list and then also watch um you know, during the day to see uh, how they're moving. We could see, you know, Tesla was going up on Friday. So that's not when I want to buy. I want to, or I want to sell puts when it's going down. And then here's the ones that I added most recently. So the ones in pink, I don't have them in my database yet. And I'm running a research tool to uh, add them to our database. So I'm working through this list. Uh, we see Dish, BFC, Moderna, etc., Newell Brands. So, so these are ones that are on the research tab, and you can see their ROIC uh, currently, and when they'll get updated. So there's Moderna again. It's showing a you know almost 11 percent. So that looks pretty attractive. We'll see. So please let me know what you think of all this. If you have any questions, recommendations for improvement to this puts ROIC spreadsheet. Um, again, comments, feedback, recommendations for improvement. Again, uh, I'm using that in combination with this option seller ROI tool to try to find additional opportunities to sell puts. Again, if you'd like me to do the research on a particular put option, just, you know, let me know in the comments below in our Discord. Our Discord's free to join. You can, you know, post it in the suggestion box or we have an options thread, um, options channel. So, again, just let me know if you'd like me to run this. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you have access to the spreadsheet or we'll review it, you know, each, uh, each Sunday again. And again, you can see we've got a number of videos and I'm coming out with more that go through this process, how I'm um, how I'm going through this process uh, and showing you what I'm doing and how I'm, I'm evaluating this in further videos. And you can see all of our previous videos and our options playlist. So I want to get to very quickly get to another uh, enhancement. 
we've been talking about for a while, dividend paying stocks and with the uh, premium on, premiums on some of the options not being uh, terribly att attractive, another opportunity I, I thought of to deploy um, you know, cash that's sitting around. Uh, idle cash was putting it into dividend stocks. We have a number of dividend stocks. We talked about OPP, talked about GLDI, SOEO. We also have STAG. Uh, you know, we've traded realty income a number of times, et cetera. Um, so again, another opportunity to deploy idle cash would be to put them in dividend stocks. So then the question becomes, well, which which dividend stocks, which ones are going to be the best Um particularly that will be inflation. So I started another Google sheet uh, with dividend payers and it is under construction. I just started it. Uh, our patrons will have um, access to this. So again, same level of access. If you're an all access or VIP Patreon, um, you are already have uh, access to this spreadsheet. I just added it this morning and it's in the all access folder. And um, I will be working on further automation, just like with our puts Google Sheet to update uh, some of this data after market close on a daily basis. Uh, but here's the dividend payers that I currently have in our database. So you can see here's the sorted, sorted by symbol. You can see uh, the dividend amount, the next X dividend date, uh, how much their declared dividend is, when it's payable, what the current yield is, as you can see, when I update it, uh, I'm going to put the date time stamp when it was last updated. And then again, you can get to a FinViz link um, to uh, directly, you know, jump over to that uh, profile of that stock quickly and easily. So uh, that's where I'm at right now. Again, if you get access to the spreadsheet, so we can see, you know, here's GLDI. It's got a 16% Yield, we talked about OPP, showing currently a 13.6. QYLD is pretty popular. We own some QYLD, showing 12.8. Um, JEPI and JEPI uh, and JEPQ, you know, we added to our ETF spreadsheet a while ago. You can see they're uh, 12 and 13% currently. So again, I'm going to start using this and figure out uh, how to highlight it, how to highlight ones that are uh, the most attractive, particularly a uh, combination of price appreciation and um, dividend yield. So I want to be able to balance those two um, to pick out the best ones if I want to deploy some cash into a, a dividend yielder. That's, that's my goal. So I'll be working on trying to figure that out and adding enhancements uh, to this spreadsheet so that we can all um, identify the most attractive dividend payers again so we can deploy capital in a way that's going to uh, beat inflation. So again, anybody that's you know currently below about you know four or five percent, uh, well, number one, if you're below five percent, then you're not beating treasury. so you might as well go just go buy treasury bonds. Um, and if you're under six, seven percent, you're not beating inflation. So there's USOI. I talked yesterday about how I'd really like to get a nice big chunk of USOI again, and you can see why it's currently showing a, a 25 percent yield. So um, I, I'm, well, I would love to see oil drop down to 70 again so I can get a chunk of USOI. We can also see the ex dividend date. Um, it'll probably, the next one will probably be around February 20th, February 19th. Um, then it's good to know the ex-dividend dates. Uh, as we talk, typically you get a price drop on the ex-dividend date. So, and also you want to, if you want to get the dividend, you need to get in before the ex-dividend date. Okay, so... If anyone has any last minute questions, I could take those from the chat. If you want to take a look at anything further in the dividends or ETFs or the put spreadsheet, we can do that. You grab a drink and see if we've got any questions. If I missed your question, I apologize. And please throw it back up in the chat um, so that I can try to answer that at this time.
Okay. So if you have any further questions, please feel free to ask them in our free Discord. Again, you'll have see an invite to our Discord in the description box below. You can also find an invite to our Discord, link to our Facebook group, uh, all our social media profiles. So you can put your questions in the comments to this video in our Discord, Facebook group, contact us via social media, etc. via any of the links on our homepage, beachbumtrading.com, bum without the U. Um, and we will try to reply as, as soon as we're able. Uh, if you, again, have suggestions for enhancements to any of the Google Sheets we're showing to this, uh, our weekly trading game plans, you know, how can we help you uh, succeed and make money in your trading uh, to the best effect uh, as possible? So let us know how you can, uh, how we can help you. Um, also, you know, please help us grow our Beach Bum Trading community. You can see we've got a great group of traders helping each other out in the chat, in the Discord, etc. So, uh, you know, help us grow the community. Uh, but let's bring back some of the traders that got, you know, wiped out in the bear market, beat up, beat up chase, chasing meme stocks, etc. Um, let's bring them back and let's let's help them see how they can make money uh, trading and succeed in their trading career as well. So uh, we hope you will share all this with your friends and fellow traders and bring them into our community. Uh, we would appreciate it as, uh, as it would benefit all of our Beach Bum trading community as well. So we hope you have a great trading week. Again, if there's anything we can do to help, uh, let us know and we will see you in, during the trading week. Have a great uh, rest of your weekend and a great trading week. Thank you for joining us. Bye.